Welcome to the Dragon Slayer podcast by East Idaho Credit Union. I am Stephen. With me, as always, is Bailey and today's guest, Christina Adair from Drop Accessories. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you. So let's start off with, for our audience who's not familiar with your business, Tell us, what is Drop Accessories? What do you do? Yeah, totally. So Drop Accessories is a brand for women and girls. We sell comfortable, tarnish-free jewelry. Um, And we're mainly earrings. We do offer like necklaces um, and rings and stuff, but mostly earrings. And I also have another business called Drop Piercing here in town. Um, And I pierce ears. Mm. So yeah. Okay, so you catch my ear just a little bit because my wife... um, she seems to be real sensitive to earrings. Yeah. And so she'll get earrings and she'll be like, I can't wear these. Mm-hmm. They don't work for me. They yeah. irritate my ears. Like they don't work. And so I'm afraid to get her earrings, actually. Mm-hmm. I did just get her some earrings because I really liked them, but I was terrified that they weren't going to work for her. They did end up working for her. But so when you say like comfortable or tarnish, what, like, what does that mean? So hypoallergenic is included in the comfort Mm -hmm. when I sell you our product. Mm -hmm. Um, And metal allergies are really common and it's really common to have a sensitive sensitivity to anything you put in your ears. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's actually one of the main things that can make you sensitive is nickel in the earrings. Mm. Um, So if you find anything nickel free, any of our accessories are nickel free. She'll she should have some success with those. Nickel free is good. Nickel free or like mm. titanium based. Like that's what I pierce with. I put the the jewelry I put in after is titanium and it's medical grade. So like any kind of like if you were to have surgery and have like an implant or like some mm. like plates, it's all titanium. Mm. So same thing. Yeah. Okay. So mm, but that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah. actually really common to have a metal allergy, which is frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, for so. sure. So nickel is bad. Nickel is bad. How would somebody even know that there's nickel in something or not? Yeah. So if you were to buy something at the store, it would say like hypoallergenic mm. or nickel free. Mm. But really, you need to find out what the metal base is. Mm. So and, you, how, and they're not going to have that listed on a there. A lot of the times, no. Yeah. Like they'll say nickel free. But I mean, if you're buying a pair of earrings from Walmart... Who knows? You know? Not me. Yeah. 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 Hmm. You never know. Okay. Um, that's really interesting, actually. My my second oldest daughter actually just came back with a gold allergy. Oh, really? Yeah. I've I never heard of that. I hadn't either. I didn't know that was a thing. Huh. Yeah. And um, I was like, well, that's disappointing. That is disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> that's too bad. Did you have to get silver for her then? Silver and that's okay. or platinum, I guess. Yeah. I mean... Her poor husband. Gosh, yeah. yeah. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> there's worse things, I guess, I right? I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so tell us about the piercing um, side of what you do as well. Yeah, so I started piercing in February, early February, and I have a studio just over here by Hip Sip, mm-hmm. um, and it's a, in a salon suite, and I offer a service called Hollow Needle Piercing. Um, Mm. for women and girls in the community. And um, if you're not familiar with hollow needle, it's really cool. It's a really sharp needle needle that's hollow on the inside. And it's just like very precise, very fast, very sharp. And then because the needle is hollow, it opens up like a little pocket for me to put the jewelry in. Mm. Um, And my goal in drop piercing is to create a family friendly environment Mm. that's safe, that's clean, that's less painful for you to bring your daughter and yourself to get mm-hmm. your ears pierced. Mm-hmm. Um, myself? Your daughter, probably. <laughs> I mean, if you want, I wouldn't turn you away, but, yeah. you know, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know that I could pull it off. I think there's some men that actually look really good with ear piercings. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I'm one of them, though. That's yeah. okay. That's yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so you talk about that like that's really different from – a lot of ear piercing places. Yeah. So what what do you typically see? Yeah. Like in another ear piercing place, like the place in the mall. Yeah, for sure. So a lot of um, places that pierce ears, they offer piercing with a piercing instrument or a piercing gun. And what that is, it's it's basically a blunt stud that's oh. put in there and you push the button, like you pull the trigger and the earring goes in the ear. And then it um, the back 
is is automatically like clicked on in the back. And Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's actually huh. really can be really damaging. In fact, a lot of the women that I see have gotten their ears pierced by these piercing instruments and they're infected or they have like a like a bump around their ear. Mm. Um and that's because it causes tissue damage. Well, yeah, it's like blunt force trauma. Yeah, exactly. To pierce the ear. That's exactly. so interesting. Hmm. And hollow needles, the exact opposite. Yeah. No tissue damage. It's very sharp, very mm. fast. And the healing process is so much less painful. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's really, it's really good, especially for little girls. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember my wife telling me when she got her ears pierced, she's had them pierced, I think, tw just twice. Once when she was younger and they miss they like put it in the wrong spot on mm -hmm. one of her ears and so she just let it heal then re-pierced it when she got a little bit older mm -hmm. um and she swears it's because they use one of those like gun things it, that's why they missed yeah i, I don't know if that's true or not no it, it actually it, is so um hollow needle is so much more accurate so i i have really great lighting in my studio i have a medical marker and i make a dot and i just i want you to be happy with your piercing mm. so you're gonna look at it and tell me to move the dot mm. as many times as I need to till mm -hmm. you're happy with the placement. And then my needle goes on the dot. Yeah. So it's so accurate. Never a misfire with the gun. Yeah. So yeah. And the piercing jewelry is a flat back, which is nice, especially for little girls because the butterfly backs can tend to get snagged mm -hmm. on hair, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. So it's amazing. It is. I, I've had my ears pierced with both the gun as well as hollow needle with Christina. Oh, you did it with her. Yes. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yay. And the healing process is so much better. It like doesn't hurt. You can sleep on your ears, which normally you like can't sleep yeah. on your ears. Mm. It's like painful. It's so good. It is hmm. so much better. So you yeah. mentioned um you mentioned the environment of mm -hmm. that place. Yeah. Explain the environment and why that matters and why that's different. Yeah. So everything's just really clean. I autoclave all of mm. my jewelry, all of my tools. Um, a lot of my tools are single use. Mm. So I use them one time and then I throw them in the trash. Um, so it's very clean. And it's also just like a really family friendly environment, Yeah. which is my main goal, my main purpose. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't feel like there's that many places for you to be able to do that here in town. Right. So yeah. it's a, it's an alternative option for you rather than taking your daughter to a tattoo parlor, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I guess that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's okay. Ta there's nothing wrong with tattoo parlors, but it's just a family friendly environment that yeah. I'm creating. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's Sweet. great. Thank you. Okay. So back to drop accessories. Uh -huh. Um, so you have a, a really specific angle around like comfort of that mm -hmm. jewelry. Yeah. Tell us more about like how do you make sure that that jewelry is comfortable for people? Okay. I love this question. So there's a, there's a few products that I offer on my website that um, are very specific to my brand. Um, I offer screw back earrings and huggies. And if you've never heard of a screw back earring, they're so great. Um, they're, they're a stud earring and you put them in your ear. There's a little grip on the back and a ball screws into the back of the stud. And it's so great for women and kids because there's no poke. Mm. So you just really don't notice that they're there. So it's like flat on the back? Is it's that it's a it ball feels? on the back. Oh, it's a ball. But yeah, okay. it's very smooth. Yeah. So like if you put them on your daughter, she lays down for a nap. Mm. She won't notice that they're there. Mm. Um, and my earrings are tarnish free. So you can wear them all the time. It's kind of like a per like kind of permanent jewelry. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you can wear them when you work out, when you shower, when you sleep. You really don't have to take them out. Mm. The same thing with my Huggies. They're a very comfortable earring. They open and they close. They click through your ear. You can sleep in them shower sweat all of those things yeah so yeah the comfort does it have anything to do with the design of the actual front of the earring like does that reduce the size or change the shapes or how does that how does that work not ne not necessarily the front um but i do have like different options like smaller options mm -hmm. bigger options mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that okay okay so that's all really interesting let's go back in time for a minute here mm -hmm. right so when did you start drop accessories what year was that? Yeah. So I started out as the leather drop in 2016 drop. Okay. and I sold leather earrings. Leather earrings. Yes. Which are also very comfortable. I would. Yeah. That makes Lightweight, sense. Lightweight, comfortable, flexible. Yeah. Um, Wear another animal skin on your yeah. on your skin. That's great. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's fine. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's maybe the weirdest thing I've ever said in the podcast. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it like is what it is. I'd like to apologize to everybody. <laughs> 
I'm glad I could be the one on the podcast when you said that. It's and I've fine. said some weird stuff, and that that might be that might be the weirdest one. Yeah, you're okay. turning a little red. Yeah, just using just using the whole animal right. to its full extent. That's right. I like it. It's good. Um. Anyways, yeah. Started out as leather earrings, and then leather earrings are a very hard. Uh, product to make in bulk while maintaining the quality mm. because everything's handmade yeah so i was well, like all the leathers are different too. all the leathers yeah. are different i was getting these leather hides into my house i was cutting the leather mm. we were cutting the earrings in my house we're trimming we're hooking we're doing we're packaging everything in my house and it became just this huge job yeah and i i, I it was so big so i would have um i heard a, a teenage boy in my neighborhood to come cut earrings and I hired this a few ladies that I knew to make earrings from home because I just couldn't do it all by myself. Yeah. And um, it just was too much. So yeah. late last year, like December, I made the decision to stop making leather earrings mm-hmm. and to just move towards um, screwback earrings, huggies, mm-hmm. waterproof jewelry, tarnish free jewelry. And it's actually been really freeing. Yeah. How has it been received from your customers? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah, good. Yeah. So how did you, what made you decide to start the business in the first place? Like what was the lead up to that moment? What was going on in your life that made you feel like I want to start some business and I think it's earrings? Yeah. Um, I had a friend say to me, have you heard of leather earrings? You should make some. And I had (laughs) all, like I had the die cut machine. So I found a a die and I found some, it was actually like, it's called faux leather. Mm, yeah, I sure. found some at the craft store and I made my first pair of leather earrings and it was right when they were becoming really popular. Mm. Um, and I just posted them on Facebook and I had so many women reaching out to me saying mm. they wanted to purchase them. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of where it all started. And I, um, I knew that if I wanted to make any money from these leather earrings that I needed to get an Etsy shop mm. and I needed to sell them in bulk. And so there's this company called jane.com mm-hmm. and they offer like affiliate you you basically sell your product there for a discount mm. um anyways so it's like a wholesale kind of deal. Yeah. kind of okay. yeah um did did jane purchase the earrings and no i sold it? i wouldn't say wholesale it's more of like an affiliate like you're affiliated okay. with them they provide the platform for right. you to sell on. Similar to Etsy. Kind Same of. Co- so what's different between like Jane and Etsy? Yeah. So Jane, your product's only on there for a certain amount of time. Oh. So the customer only has a certain amount of time to buy the product and it's usually at a really good discount. I see. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Have... That's an interesting. Do you, have you been on Jane? Oh yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's every, good, huh? Yeah. I have to stay away from it because every time I go on, I do buy something. Yeah. And it's cheap, huh? Yes. So cheap. You get really good gifting options mm-hmm. there. Hmm. Yeah. I've never actually even heard of it. I it, bet your wife has. It's possible. Honestly. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. So, so if somebody was listening and they were considering Etsy or Jane, what kind of advice would you give them? Like, what would you say, use this one to do this, use this, that one to do that? Yeah, for sure. So Etsy is a great place to always have your product. Mm-hmm. So it's always going to be there. It's always going to have its place. Jane's a great place for you to like find a bigger reach mm. um, because – Jane's got like all of these customers. They've got a customer base built every like there's an app. Everyone's getting on every day to check that what's on the Jane deals today. Mm. Um, So if you really want to broaden your reach and fast, Jane's the way to go. Interesting. It really got my name out there. Um, I had some people put in my path because of Jane.com. And yeah, it was just like a really great way to start my business. So would you recommend it as use it to get started, but maybe that's not your long-term play. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And yeah. you you have to be willing to offer a discount. Yeah. Like so a pretty deep discount, it It's pretty like. deep, yeah. So does your margin, like, are you still making money or are you kind of flat on your your margins? Yeah, I was making money. Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's definitely not as much as if you were just selling. Through Etsy or mm-hmm. something. Or yeah. on a website, yeah. Right, yeah. But hmm. it was a great way to start for sure. It's interesting, just as a method for exposure. Mm-hmm. Exposure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Um, Which is, you know, part of the, the play for Etsy to, or Amazon or like Walmart.com mm-hmm. is that you have this built-in, you know, customer base. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
it just lets you get access to that customer base. What's interesting about Jane, and I've never used it, but the thing that sounds interesting about it is it's all time based, mm -hmm. it sounds like, which is brilliant, actually. It's a fantastic business model for those guys because it builds urgency in every single product that hits that site. It's mm -hmm. like you got to do it now or you may never get to do it. Exactly. And, yeah, that's pretty no, good. I, so I, as far as I know, I was the first person to sell leather earrings on Jane.com. And I had my um, my listings on there on Jane.com. And my deal, my deal went live, I think, at 12 a.m. And I woke up that morning and everything was sold out. Wow. So, like, it was really cool. And it was just, like, so motivating. And um, yeah. But, yeah, it, it, the time thing, it's it creates FOMO, you yeah, know, <laughs> for sure. sure. Yeah. So when that happened and you were, like, sold out, were you like, oh, crap. Like, I don't know that I was ready for that. Yeah, it was traction. crazy. It was so much fun. It was so crazy. My husband and I, we had no idea how to ship anything. <laughs> we didn't know that Jane wasn't going to pay us until we shipped everything. Oh, yeah. And we had like, I don't even know, like $50 in our checking account. Oh, my. <laughs> I, it was ridiculous. We had to open a credit card. We had to put all this on the credit card. The worst first business decision you can ever make. Just put it on the credit Just card. It the um, but it was, it actually set some really foundational, um, it, it helped set some foundational things for my business. They required you to have a shipping program on jane.com mm. and I have been with that shipping program ever since oh, I started. So okay. it's just been it was a great thing to start with. It fast the more I think about it, some of your yeah. business structure, and it made me learn things and, and yeah. yeah, structure. Yeah. So you mentioned, and this is not an uncommon experience where you're like, we have fifty dollars, we got to get a credit card to get this stuff shipped out. Mm -hmm. Like, if you could go back in time, back to the lead up to that moment, what would you have done differently? At East Idaho Credit Union, we offer startup loans for emerging businesses to help support you in the early stages of growth. This could be for inventory, equipment, or other operating expenses. Almost all businesses qualify. Get started today by visiting us at eastidahocu.org slash start. Federally insured by the NCUA. So you mentioned, and this is not an uncommon experience where you're like, we have $50. We got to get a credit card to get this stuff shipped out. Mm -hmm. Like if you could go back in time back to the lead up to that moment, what would you have done differently? Uh, honestly, that's a really good question. Probably nothing. <laughs> that's okay. We learned so much. Yeah. We learned so much. And and I don't think you can put a value sticker on learning something yourself yeah, and true. having an experience yeah. yourself, you know? Yeah, unfortunately, like the best teachers pain huh oh for sure for <laughs> sure yes and you're like well okay we'll never do that again yeah, or that I'll definitely sucked. do that differently in the future yeah. yeah it's interesting um every it's so interesting every time i talk to somebody about like their big failures they'll also quickly follow it up with it like i'll i would never give that experience away mm -hmm. like because it built me into something really really important for sure it created something that i needed mm -hmm. like you're like i don't how do i ship stuff and mm -hmm. you, you know yeah it built a lot of your business even though it was kind of it was probably like you had moments where you're like what do we get into yeah yeah exactly mm. okay so you start the business you hit jane it goes gangbusters and then you then you got to like take out the credit card get it all shipped out and then what are you like okay now we're out of stuff now what do we do yeah. like what what did you what was the next step in the the process there so one of my biggest things was getting my margins bigger mm -hmm. um so that was a big focus finding more leather suppliers finding really good quality hypoallergenic hooks to use mm -hmm. on my earrings um, and then growing my Instagram, doing collaborations, mm -hmm. getting the word out there because I knew I had had, I knew I had a successful product Yeah, and so I needed to keep the momentum going. Yeah. So, so let, let's talk about margins for a minute mm -hmm. here. So, and you don't have to share any of the details here that you're not comfortable with, but, um, when you were seeking to increase your margins, what were the mechanisms that you were using to try and drive those numbers? Just buying bigger quantities. Yeah, bulk. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I figured out really fast that if I went straight to the manufacturer and bought the full hide, mm -hmm. it was such 
the way margins cheaper. were so good. Yeah. 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 So like that is one thing I can I could tell someone like just buy it in bulk. Mm-hmm. Like it might take a minute to sell it, but you're going to get it for ch- so much cheaper. Yeah. Did you change the retail pricing at all? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I started out super low because I didn't know what I was doing. Well, it, you know, this the story that I've always like heard is, you, you know, you put it up for sale and it sells out like so quickly. It's like, well, your price was wrong. <laughs> like, yeah, you, exactly. You're selling it for too, too cheap, little. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So you started buying bulk. You increased your prices a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else that you did to mess with your margins at all? Packaging, yeah. shipping. How did you? Was there anything there that you did? Um, I mean, definitely just trying to get every little thing that goes into your packaging as cheap as you can get it. Sure. Which comes down to like the bag, yeah, the, the earring card, mm-hmm. the rubber backs you put on the back of your earrings, all of that. Um, and I, like, I hate to say it, but it really comes down to being able to buy stuff in bulk. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so for somebody who, and maybe this is an impossible question to ask, but I'd love you to take a swing at it. (laughs) For somebody who's maybe just getting going and they have $50 in their checking account and they're trying to get their margin to a place that's comfortable. Do you tell them buy in bulk or do you tell them? Like just bootstrap it till you can, or like what what advice do you give them? I say bootstrap it till you can. I am not a fan of going into debt. Sure. If you can avoid debt at all costs, please do. Um, I would say work on building your audience so that when you have the product, it's it's gonna sell out. Mm-hmm. And every time you get that little pocket of money, then you take it and you you put it towards your next big purchase. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Talking about audience. Will you talk about social media a little bit? You've done really, really well on your social media. Thank you. Um, So what advice would you give other people? Um, Social media, you got to be in it for the long game. Um, (laughs) I would say the one thing that I've done is just shown up Mm -hmm. on social media. Um, My followers know who I am, but they know that I'm drop accessories. Um, Another way to really grow your social media is to collaborate with other people, other influencers, other brands. Uh, that go along with your brand. Um, but really, there's so much money to be made on social media. Um, and the, the social media gives you the tools. Like you can make a catalog so you can tag your product on social media. Mm-hmm. So social media, so for in, for instance, Instagram doesn't want you to leave their app. Mm-hmm. So they're going to they're gonna give the seller all the tools to create the catalog so the customer can stay on the app to purchase, right. which is the best like most amazing tool. It's pretty genius. It is. Yeah. And yeah. Facebook offers that. Um, I'm not super familiar with TikTok, but I'm going to assume that they offer that as well. Mm, I don't know that they do. I think they have, they have like, you can like click into the a profile and they have like a link tree, but I think they take you off yeah, site. Yeah, you're taking okay. off site. Yeah. 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 Instagram wants you to stay in their app. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's, it's just like the most amazing tool to be able to sell directly on those yeah. platforms. Hmm. Um, talk a little bit more about collaborating Mm -hmm. with some of these other brands or Mm -hmm. influencers. And so the one that's really interesting is finding a brand to like co-market with. Yeah. Like an adjacent brand to what you do. Like how do you evaluate and find those kinds of people? Who do you use to do that with? Okay. So you guys just had Jasmine Ray Herco on your podcast. I actually have done two collections with her. Mm -hmm. Um, I learned from China. She owns Little Mom Shirt Shop. We love China. We love China. She's one of my best friends. I took a business class from her, and I learned about collaborations in that business class. Before the business class, I had no idea what collaborations were. Um, But she listed some names of influencers that she had worked with in her business and said, you guys should contact them. What's the worst that could happen? They're going to say no. Big whoop, you know? So one of the names was, was Jasmine. And so I emailed her and I was basically like, I was like, China, can I name drop you in this email? Like, what do I say to her? And I was like emailing this to China, like, does this look good? Um, she's like, yeah, it looks good. And um, anyways, basically like it was kind of like a little job interview, like telling people why you're so great, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I like put all this stuff in my email and then I just said, listen, I really want to, I really want to collaborate with you. Um, and China said she had some great success with it. And so I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to have some great success with this uh, collaboration too. And I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and she first, she did a shout out for me and it was amazing. I got lots of sales from that. 
And then I got really brave and asked her to do a collection with me. And we designed all the leather. Um, mm. We designed the earrings. And then she shared it to her audience. I shared it to mine. Um, but yeah, I I can't say and enough just killed good for you. things. Yeah. And then I did another one. Killed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Um, like with influencers, people, we sort of. It's like we know them, but we kind of think of them as celebrities just mm-hmm. a little bit. And we're sort of scared of them a little. For sure. And they're just regular people. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a few on. And they're just regular people. Mm-hmm. And um, just asking to, like, work with them. Like, they like it. Like, the, it's flattering. They appreciate the recognition of all their hard work. And they're actually, I feel like, more open to saying yes. Like, if, if they can make it work, they will make it work. Right. Um. And so, yeah, I think it's a really, really easy and actually a lot easier play than people think it is. It's just kind of scary to get over the hump of like yeah. starting to do it. Totally. I like to think of it as a triangle too. Like it's going to benefit everyone. Yeah. It's going to benefit the influencer. It's going to be- benefit the business and it's going to benefit the customer. Correct. And how do we make it so we can benefit? Benefit. Everyone can benefit from it. Yeah. Um, and so if you can do that within your collaboration, like it's, it's going to be so good. Right. Yeah. So I love that idea. Yeah. Okay. So you're going, it's like a real thing. Mm, We're running. You're running. Yeah. Um, what struggles did you hit along the way? Like what were the the little speed bumps that kind of tripped you up that you could let somebody know that's coming behind you? Here's the speed bump that's going to happen. Here's what's going to hit you. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, my husband lost his job. Mm. I ended up supporting our family for an entire year wow. just off of leather earrings. It sounds crazy. I bet um, that was so formative though. It was. Where you were just it like, really it's was. time to get really real about this. Yeah. You know? It was. It was, it was, um, it made me feel like, wow, I can really do anything, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, my husband lost his job. Don't worry. He's employed now. We're good. <laughs> um, but I feel bad that I wasn't worried about that when you said it. I was yeah. Like, oh, it was fine. a long time <laughs> ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was six years ago. So he better have a job That's now. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love him. Um, so a couple years ago, we ran Facebook ads mm-hmm. and we ran them for an entire year. We spent 40 grand on the Facebook yeah. ads and we broke even oh, and it hurt really bad. And I like looking back, I wasn't educated enough to run. So what not, was, I didn't run them, but I wasn't educated enough to know what to look for. So what was wrong with the ads? What was wrong with doing that? Yeah. Why so didn't it work well? I realized that I didn't have like a solid foundation for some of the things in my business. So I didn't have any SEO work done on my website. Mm. I didn't have, um, what was the other thing that I didn't have? I didn't have my emails automated like they should be. So like I didn't have a welcome series set up. So there was just some things that I needed to tweak and to do and to add to make the Facebook ads run more effectively. Yeah. Um, and actually I'm getting ready to restart Facebook ads. I needed some time to like emotionally (laughs) come back from that. Yeah. Yeah, And financially, (laughs) but, but just, it's, it's okay now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to do it. They're going to be more successful. I've set myself up for some success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was hard, but also I wouldn't trade that experience. It's a, yeah, it's an expensive education. But it was, yeah. yeah. It's, it's still valuable. School of hard knocks. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, was, the ad, was there anything wrong with the ad itself, like the ads that you were running? Were you missing something in the way that they looked or the messaging or anything there? Would probably, you do something different? Yeah, probably the brand messaging. Um, looking back on it too, like there's just so many numbers that go into it, like how much you spend, um, how much it takes to get one person to click to your website. Right. Like there's so many different strategies. Um, and maybe the, the person running the ads in my business weren't the best fit either. Sure. You know, so there's just so many things that go into running Facebook ads. So were you, did you hire an agency to yes. do ads then? Yes. Um, are you doing them in house this time? Or no, you... I am hiring another agency, mm-hmm. but she's done all the SEO work on my site. Oh, so she knows your business. She knows really my well. business. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm really comfortable with her and she's just so great. Nice. Who, who is it? You, you can name drop. Yeah, here. sure. Her name's Janie Russell. If anyone wants her information, I'm more than happy to give it to okay. you. Love yeah. It. Love Hopefully she's okay with me name dropping. Well, we'll find so, out, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, she's so great. She's so great. Nice. Nice. I love it. Um, 
what other struggles did you have as you were going through things? So you hit this wall on Facebook ads. Uh, something that always seems to come up is like stock and managing stock and especially if you have like a physical product that you're selling. Mm -hmm. Did you have any trouble around that as you were growing and and changing over the years? Um, the, the one thing that sticks out to me is um, it was really hard to get leather in when COVID hit. Oh, So yeah. if you remember, Italy completely shut down. Yes, I do remember. Okay, yeah. and that's where I was getting a lot of my leather. Mm, I was getting it Italian straight from leather, very yeah, nice. I know yeah. it's fancy <laughs> stuff. Very nice. Um, but anyways, that was that was a huge trial. Um, another huge trial that sticks out to me is just like all the mom guilt that comes from oh. running a business and feeling lonely. Um, so, so explain that. What do you? What do you? What were you feeling then? Yeah, just like that you shouldn't be doing it because you need to be with your kids. Mm. I'm sure you. Oh yeah, totally. That. Totally. The kids have enough attention though. It's okay. <laughs> I can promise you. What it's one thing I'm learning. Yeah. So what advice would you give people around managing that? How to pull your attention one way or the other and when to make those decisions? Yeah, for sure. So I feel like, um, it doesn't matter how much time you spend with your kids. It's like the intention of spending mm -hmm. the time, your time with the mm -hmm. kids and like really focusing on them. Mm -hmm. So like, just put your cell phone away, spend 10 minutes yeah. doing playing Uno or playing whatever they want to do. Yeah. Like just do it with them for that time and be focused on them. Um, that's one thing that's really helped me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's hard to juggle everything. I don't know if there's a right answer to that. I think we all struggle with it a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Know? Um, I, entrepreneurs in particular have a tendency to let their work overrun parts of their life. And, you know, I'm certainly guilty of that mm -hmm. too. And there's been moments where I've been traveling for work and I've been gone for two weeks and, you know, my like six-year-old calls me and is crying, daddy, I miss you. And I'm like, oh, I feel awful mm -hmm. about this, right? I, and I'm having a good time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, and I, you know, it's hard. And in fact, last night, my son uh, wanted to play a card game with me. And I was like busy with stuff, just trying to take care of things. We've got horses and animals and, you know, just got to work on things. And my to-do list is 8,000 miles long, it feels like. And um, and I told, I was like, I don't really have time, bud. I just, I got, I got this thing to do and this thing to do and this thing to do. And he's like, all right. And he walked away and I was like. And you feel bad. Well, and I was like, oh. And I was like, why can't I just take 10 minutes and play the game with them? Mm -hmm. I mean, the world. so I actually was like, no, you know what? Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And so we sat down and we played. It was only like 10 minutes. And um, I just remember like when I was a kid and my dad was real busy too. When he would take those moments, those are like the world. And I realized like those 10 minutes were just like a really simple 10 minutes for me but it meant the world to him. Mm -hmm. And I think it's true of like any career people where you're trying to do something incredible. Mm -hmm. It just takes an incredible amount of commitment and mm -hmm. energy. Do you have like a schedule that you follow to make sure that you do that effectively or rules that you follow or guidelines? Like how do you do it? Yeah. Okay. I love this question. So I've been working with a business coach this year and she pointed out to me that life has been happening to me and I have mm. not been happening to my mm -hmm. life. And I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. And she pointed out some really simple routine things. So having an, an evening and a morning routine is super important. But she uh, pointed out some super important things that can help me set myself up for the next day so my life does not happen to me. And one of the most simple things she said is, what is it like when you get your kids out the door in the morning mm. and I'm like, it is a crap show. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're, I don't know where their stuff is. <laughs> their shoes are probably outside under the trampoline. Uh -huh, yeah. Who knows if they have clean socks. I don't even match socks. I have a sock bucket. So I'm like, cool, go get your socks from the sock bucket. They never match. They're usually my socks. It's, it's a crap show. Mm. So, um, she said to me, do you know what I do, Christina? I put their shoes by the door and I stick a pair of socks in their <laughs> shoes every night uh -huh. before school. Uh -huh. And I thought to myself, that is genius. That is common sense. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. 
And so that leads to me putting their clothes out. That leads to me setting their backpacks out. That leads to me putting their coats on their backpacks. And guess what? Getting them out the door in the morning is cake. Yeah. So I, I bet it becomes a pleasant experience. It is pleasant. And and I'm happening to it. It's not happening right. to me. And yeah. that goes with anything. Yeah. So that morning routine, that evening routine of me cleaning the house, getting the kids socks and shoes by the door is something that I don't miss because so good. it's yeah. everything's just so smooth. And it's kind of funny because if you think about it, that's common sense. Mm-hmm. But for someone to have to tell you that common sense and then when it it, it hits, it's just it clicks. Well, it makes so you're, much sense. You're too close to know what to do. You are. Right? You're and too you, close. You need the coach to be like, hey, you're missing this. And really you're usually mad yeah. too. That doesn't help either. It doesn't. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I've got my kids up for school. It's awful. Like that. <laughs> it's so awful. It's the worst. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. It's great advice though. I know. And it's so simple, you know, and you can do that for everything. Like, okay, well, I'm going to be working today. And I know that if my desk isn't clean, mm. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have clear headspace, mm. mm-hmm. you know? So it it goes with everything in your life. Well, I think there's a great discipline that goes along with that too. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, 10 o'clock hits and you're like, I don't want to get the socks and the dang shoes. And put them on the <laughs> right. But it matters, right? It does. It matters. And so, yeah, I, I've, I've always liked the idea of like motivation is fairly useless. Discipline is what really actually matters. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. And it's all about creating a new habit, which which yeah. can be hard. But really, if you do something for so long and you see the benefit and you see the compound effect of it, mm-hmm. like, why would you want to go back? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I don't know. It's really good advice. Great advice. What's next for you guys? Yeah. Doing really well. Business expanding, growing, new ear piercing, you know, place. At East Saddle Credit Union, we're changing the future of business with our Velocity Money Market account. You can receive unbeatable returns on tiered interest rates. We have rates up to 2.02% annual percentage yield. East Saddle Credit Union puts local businesses first because when you do better, we all do better. Federally insured by the NCUA. What's next for you guys? Yeah. Doing really well. Business expanding, growing, new ear piercing you know, place. What, what's next for you? <laughs> I don't know. I was like, what do you no, call that's that place? Perfect. That's perfect. I was like, is it a salon Great. or in my head? I, was I like, call it maybe... a studio, but I'm still not sure if that's what it is. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going like to start it. calling it a bar. There you go. Oh my the gosh. ear piercing bar, maybe. I actually have a piercing menu on my wall, oh. so I guess you could call it that. Okay. So I, I like think it. we need to come up with the appropriate yeah. name for what that place is. Yeah, we can figure yeah. it out. A saloon, maybe. Oh my gosh. Hoot right. nanny? I don't know. Yeah. It could go okay. on. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. There's there's dumb dumb suckers in there, so I don't know. Uh, okay. Well. But so I, I actually just started a subscription box for drop oh. accessories. So that's a really big deal. That's awesome. Um so every month if you if you subscribe, you get a pair of tarnish free screwbacks mm-hmm. and another coordinating accessory delivered to your door every that's month. That's killer. And it's called the drop box. I love it. Goes the drop with, box. with drop accessories. That's so good. I love it. Yeah. So yeah. It's great branding. Thank you. Um that's awesome. So when did you launch that? Yesterday. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was a big wow. deal. It was very stressful leading up. And then once I launched it, I just felt this huge weight off my shoulders. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So Oh, that's so good. I love that. Yeah. Um good traction so far. Yeah, so far, so good. Awesome. I'm very happy with it. Yeah. I've um so I come from the tech world and one of the like billing models in the tech world is um, maybe you contract somebody for a year, two years, or three years, and they pay monthly, right? Mm-hmm. So it's monthly recurring revenue. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful business model because those kinds of businesses are really hard to kill. Yeah. Um, when you have recurring revenue that you just know is going to be there month after month after month. And so, yeah, it it's a challenge for retail places that sell like a retail product to develop like a recurring revenue stream, but you, that's, I mean, that's the model right there that you're doing. Yeah. It's a great, great way to get really stable. Yeah. Thank you. I'm excited. And I, I'm marketing at it as you get a, um, a tarnish free screw back Mm -hmm. and you put it in the day you get it. And then in a month when you're ready to change it out, somebody made another pair. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. And they get to customize their box. They get to choose gold or silver. Mm -hmm. Um, 
because some people are team gold, some people are team silver. What are Everyone's you? I'm team gold. Team gold. What about you? Blue? I love gold. See, there you go. I go back and forth. Do you? I kind of do. I'm probably <laughs> more silver. Uh huh. I don't wear a lot of jewelry. I wear watches. Okay. Sometimes, but. I have, in fact, my favorite watch is like half silver, half gold. Okay. Mm. Some people mix. Yeah. It's a thing. Doing it's a little mixing luck. around here. Yeah. Yeah. It's dangerous, but it can some be. people can pull it off. Some people can really pull it off. I I don't feel confident enough in myself to mix metals. Yeah. <laughs> like strictly gold. That's it. I think We're there's good. some generational stuff attached to like the silver or gold yeah. thing. I remember when I was a kid thinking, oh, you only want to do silver. That was the generation I was in, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, 90s, that was kind of what you did. And my dad was, you know, all gold, right? Mm -hmm. Everything gold, definitely team gold. And I remember being like in my mid-20s and my dad uh, handed me one of his gold watches and was like, I want you to put that on. And I put on this gold watch and I was like... Hey, <laughs> team that gold. Was pretty good. I kind of <laughs> like that. Um, but it felt old to me still at that point mm -hmm. in time. But I feel like that's starting to swing oh, yeah. back a little bit. It is. Yeah. So popular. Well, now. my wedding ring is silver. And I remember yeah. when I got married, that was that was it. It was it. But so, now I've same. seen more yeah. gold. Yeah. Yeah. I have gold in mine. Yeah. Yours is gold? Yeah, I have gold in it. Look at now that's like a rose yeah, gold. It's a rose is that gold. Yeah, pretty. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of that too. Rose gold's yeah. so pretty. Yeah. My grandpa, my grandmother passed away a few years ago, and I was left some uh, like stuff that my grandpa had. Um, it was actually really sweet. My grandma like put it in a little box and like wrote me notes about all the things in there. And she gave me um, a bolo tie. Mm. <laughs> this is the kind of from Texas, right? So she gave me a bolo tie, and um, it's like a gold bolo tie and in the middle there's like a gold like nugget like a little golden nugget that i guess they found in alaska hmm, when they wow. were living in alaska for a couple of years and i've never worn it and i feel like every time i see it in my closet i feel a little guilty that i've never worn it and i i keep thinking like when am i ever gonna put that thing on you got to put your gold watch on with it that would be good there she gave go. me some cufflinks too yeah. that have that they have like uh, like polished petrified wood that actually my grandpa stole from a <laughs> national park. But <laughs> <laughs> I love your grandpa already. He sounds like an awesome guy. I love that. And my grandma it. had it like polished and made into these cufflinks. Uh -huh. And um, anyway, I had, I did I have worn those. Actually, I wore those to his funeral. Where I wore those cufflinks, but. Anyway, um, jewelry, yeah. jewelry can hold so much well, sentimental isn't that value. So interesting. Yeah. Like that stuff I would never pick for myself, mm -hmm. but I wear like those cufflinks any, all the time because yeah. I mean, they're, they're granddad's cufflinks. Mm -hmm. and, and even if you don't yeah. wear them, you're always going to keep, you're yeah. going to keep totally. them. Yeah. yeah. 100%. And in a safe place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Subscription box. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. What else? What is there anything else coming up for you guys? I mean, just growing the, the yeah. piercing business and yeah. just, I, I've been booked every Saturday for two months. And so well, it's time to start expanding already. I know like. that's <laughs> right. Come see me. Yeah. And, um, no, I'm just, I just so many good things at some point. I'd like to marry the two. Yeah. I mean, I already sell my jewelry in my piercing shop and that's kind of the start of it, but, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah. It's awesome. Will you talk a little bit about going through that process of rebranding from drop piercing to um, drop accessories? Yeah, for sure. It was the biggest pain in the butt. <laughs> it was the most tedious thing I've ever done. Make a list. Where do I need to change my logo? Mm -hmm. Make a list. Where do I need to change my name? Get a new LLC. Mm -hmm. Get, I mean, it was so much, so many things. But... I'm so glad I did it. It's just feels better, you know? Yeah. And it feels like, like I'm more, I, I used to hate the word aligned because I felt like it was a woo woo word, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I feel so aligned with my business yeah. and I feel like you can't pr put a price tag on that. Even if there's a million things that you need to change your name on, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what was the yeah. hardest part about that? Was it just going through every one of those little yes. steps? Yeah. Yes. Change the email, change the website, change the domain, yeah. get new packaging. 
get, I mean, I, and then even changing your Instagram handle and people right. are like, oh, I thought you were the what mother happened? drop. Yeah, yeah, where are you? I'm like, I'm just still here. We're just yeah. new name, you yeah. know? Um, Did you get much backlash from customers? Not really, no, yeah. because I felt like I um, I led up to it. Yeah, you communicated it well. Lots of communication, yeah. some emails, some text messages, stuff like that. So. There's an inter- Anytime somebody goes through a rebrand, there's this really interesting where you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. But then they look at the list <laughs> or they start to discover the list of oh, everything yeah. that needs to happen. They're like, this is the worst idea. I can't believe. Yeah, it's we a had lot. To do this. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's good. My my mm-hmm. husband helped me a ton with it. I didn't do it by myself. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it was a lot of work, but it weren't totally worth it. Yeah. You've mm-hmm. mentioned a, several people that have helped you along the way. You've mm-hmm. mentioned China. You've mentioned your business coach, mm-hmm. your husband. Mm-hmm. Who are the people that have influenced you and mentored you along the way through this? And what kinds of things did they teach you? Yeah. So the first person that comes to my mind is my dad. Mm-hmm. He w- he was an entrepreneur. He's mm-hmm. a farmer. Mm-hmm. Um, and he really instilled the value of hard work in me as a young child. He, I remember every summer we'd have to pick rock and hoe beets on the farm. Um, and that, but there would always be a reward. He, every day he would bring Mountain Dew and jelly filled donuts. And that's what we would have for breakfast. Um, and I still, every time I eat a jelly filled donut, I'm like, dang, I need a Mountain Dew. Um, and vice versa. And it's the weirdest combination. It's yeah. good though. It fits. You should try it. Yeah. Anyways, he instilled hard work. I'm not going to try it, but yeah. It's good. I mean, I have bite a donut, too, drink though. a Mountain Dew. I have one of those too. Mine is salsa verde Doritos and a Coke. Yeah, there you go. I can't have one without the other. Yeah, it's like yeah. pizza and pop. Like, you yeah. got to have it. Yeah. Um, but my dad just instilled hard work in me. And um, one of my other really big cheerleaders is my husband. He he loves my business. He's so invested. He always says to other people, I just really love women's accessories. <laughs> I love that. And he's, like, very comfortable in his manhood to say that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but, yeah, I, I just – I, I've surrounded myself with really good, hardworking people. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of success is surrounding yourself with the right people. Yeah. So uh, so much of it. Yeah. Because you can have a great idea and a great business and even know what to do. Mm-hmm. And then have people telling you, eh, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. And it, it'll deflate you over time. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody gets worn down eventually. They do. Yeah. yeah. Or built up. Yep. Right? You exactly. Get to, and you get to pick which one you want to have around you. Yep. There's something to that whole conversation too, because some of these people are just built in your life and you can't like just get rid of them, right? Mm -hmm. Like your mom Mm -hmm. or whoever. Um, How do you make sure you've got the right people around you? That's a really good question. It's a hard one. It is. Some people are just blessed to have those people just built in and some are just not. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think... You, you have to put yourself out there and you have to put yourself in a position to have those people around you. Yeah. Um, and then boundaries are so important. Yeah. Like having the right boundaries with certain people. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, it, you're, it's your choice mm-hmm. with who you surround your, yourself with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer the question? I think That's so. a really tough question. It's a hard one. Yeah. Because especially if it's like, I don't know, a close friend. That's just a naysayer. Yeah. Like, how do you handle that kind of a thing? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. I think perspective is really important. If you're ex- perspective and being ex- expecting something from mm-hmm. them, you know, like if, if they're just negative person, maybe you're going to expect it and you're going to walk away and you're going to be done. I think there's a certain amount of like, like, I don't take what my mom says too seriously at this point in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> mom. Well, and, and and there but there and this is an example, and my mom would understand what I mean by this, but um my mom is very risk averse and a little anxious about things. And so if I want to talk about something that's a little risky, she's the wrong person to talk to. Yeah. Right? Because the answer is always no, don't do it. Mm-hmm. No matter what, mm-hmm. it's no, don't do it. And so it doesn't mean I don't love my mom. It's just not a, you know, a topic we're going to engage on. Yeah. And, um, and we actually, we've had to have some conversations over the years where I've been like, Hey, this just isn't like a good thing for us to really, I love you. You love me. And that's a boundary you've set in place with your mom. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. That's a healthy boundary. I I agree. Yeah. 
Um, now it still doesn't stop her from making little comments here and there. She's your mom. Because <laughs> she's mom, yeah. right? She's got to do that. But um, but she's also does her best to be respectful of kind of letting me do what I want to do as For well. Sure. Um, but yeah, it can be hard. It can be hard to deal with that sort of a thing. Yeah. I think one of the things that entrepreneurs have to learn how to do and be pretty quickly if they're going to be successful is to be brave in the face of scary things. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously there's no, there's no bravery without a little fear mm -hmm. mixed in. And sometimes it's saying, mom, we can't talk about this. And mm -hmm. that can be a hard conversation for people. Sometimes it's like putting together an ad campaign and just hoping to heaven that it's going to work well. Yeah. Or trying a new supplier and praying that it's going to be the right mm -hmm. kind of stock that you want. And yep. like, it's just, everything's a little scary Yeah, and everything requires a little bit of bravery to do. For sure. And, and a lot of good comes out of that too. Yeah, I think so. It's funny. So we've done, we've recorded maybe 20 of these at this point. And there's some consistencies that I see of every person that sits in that chair and whether they're introverted or extroverted or have like a wide range of experiences or, or not. Um, the thing that I always see is a level of just confidence in listening to their own like inner voice mm. and, and like marching to the beat of their drum. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really interesting to watch cause it's really palatable. I don't know if you can see that too, Bailey. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'll sit here and talk to people in the, in and they're not pushy about it yeah. and they're not rude about it or anything like that. They just, they've had some experiences that lead them to feel like they know the direction forward. Totally. And, mm -hmm. but are also humble enough to be like, I, you know, this is it. But if this happens, then I can change it. And that's okay too. Yeah. Like they're not too married to anything. It's a really interesting combination of, of like traits that you see and anybody sitting in that chair and you have well, that's too. how yeah. entrepreneurship is yeah. it, it, you're it, you're in charge right so if you want to change something that's fine you can change it mm -hmm. and so i think that's why entrepreneurs take so many different roads yeah and also there's no cap on entrepreneurship right there's no cap on my business mm -hmm. i can make as much money as i want i can make a little as little money as i want right so that's that's just part of entrepreneurship yeah i don't know yeah like in our blood well and i think they <laughs> that good entrepreneurs also have a an ability to like separate themselves from the business like you're not going to take like if i said hey, i don't like those earrings you're going to be okay with that oh for sure right like yeah. you're not going to be bothered by that at right all. no emotional attachment right yeah. and, and i think that's such an interesting skill to learn that mm -hmm. entrepreneurs have okay but i love the earrings yeah, I'm not. <laughs> they're all cute. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Well, I'm right. gonna be honest. I'm not gonna wear any of them. That's I okay. Just, they don't work. For Wouldn't me. expect yeah. you to. It's fine. <laughs> totally fine. Maybe I'll get a bolo in though. Bolo oh, yeah. line. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll collab with you on a bolo line. All right. If you want. Sounds yeah. great. Let's do it. Uh, if you came out with that, there might be a small uprising on social media. They'd be like, "What are you doing?" There right might now? be bolos are coming back though. Are they really? I've been seeing more. My father-in-law wears a bolo to church every Sunday and every now and then it comes up with me and my husband, really? but now like, I'm is your seeing husband him. Like I could really use a bolo tie. No, okay. no, <laughs> but I, I see him making a comeback. Really? I really, yeah. Okay. How, yeah. how old is your father-in-law? He, I think he's almost 70. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> he's a young guy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. I'm just, I'm, a comeback where, I guess, is my question. Mm -hmm. With the 70 year old crowd or no, with like with the younger crowd. Like 20 year old kids, 30 yeah. year old kids. Well, and I've even seen women wearing them as necklaces. Really? Yeah. Have you seen that? Uh, see, this is where my question comes okay. in. I want to make sure I'm understanding what a bolo tie is. Oh, I okay. feel like I do know, but I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're the expert. Yeah. I don't know that I'm the expert. I mean, I've been around. Okay. So typically. It's going to be like a, it's almost leather, like a shoe usually. lace kind of thing of leather. Yeah. Right. And then there's like a little, what do you, what would you call that thing? It's like a gem, but it oh. has two places where the, you thread the, the, the laces go through and yeah. you pull it up. Whoosh, right. Yeah. And you can use it like a, a tie, I guess. Yeah. And you would, you would put it under your collar. Right. Yeah. You put it under but. your collar. And that's what okay. It I feel like I've seen that. All right. Yeah. yeah. Really? 
Yeah. The who? Wall Street Journal posted something maybe a year ago uh-huh. about how bolo ties are coming back. <gasps> she, and she okay. and you've got that. Nick Jonas yes. wearing one. Yes. And Post the Malone jo- wearing oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. If Posty's wearing them, oh, yeah, they're I in. It. Yes. But, but that's the Wall Street Journal. Why is the Wall Street Journal commenting on <laughs> fashion? That's a good question. <laughs> they usually yeah. have like a turquoise piece in them too. Yeah, they get, so they make that little, that whatever you would call that piece, the bolo maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can make it out of a lot of stuff. Like sometimes they're metal. Sometimes they have like a like a turquoise or a gem yeah. on them. Let's see. Yep. Yeah, they got like some interesting. Oh, these are awful. <laughs> <laughs> these are not traditional. No, they're not. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care for those at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, those ones are probably real. So those expensive. are real. Probably. Probably. They probably have diamonds in them. Those it are pretty like sleek. Diamond um, bolos. That, that is not. That's not what I would think of as a bolo tie. But yeah, there you have it. Posty's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll dust mine off. And I've got, I think, three of them. Maybe wear it to space, you know? <laughs> wear it in your next podcast. <laughs> okay. I should have like worn it, it when yes. we had Jackson built on. That I, prob- been good. I probably could have worn it then. Yes. If you were going to distill the last several years of your business into a couple of pieces of advice that a young entrepreneur could take away and apply to their life and to what they're doing. All of your wisdom, all the missteps, all the triumphs and the failures. What are, what are the pieces of advice you would give to that young entrepreneur? Yeah. I would say that you just have to keep going. Mm. Um, and, and the, the work compounds. So you do one thing and it compounds on the next thing and it builds and it builds and it builds. Um, and I would also say that get comfortable doing really repetitive things. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's really important. Um, I, I just think it, when I used to make leather earrings, I would make leather, leather earrings and I'd sit and package them for an hour. Yeah. And if you're not comfortable doing really repetitive, boring things, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe entrepreneurship isn't your thing. Yeah. I don't know. And all those things can be hired out, but you also have to be able to have done the jobs yeah. that you're asking your employees to do. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's interesting because I think most people are one of two things. They're either great creatives or strategists and other people are great like operational or, or like tacticians. Mm-hmm. And very infrequently is that the same person? Yeah. It's certainly not for me. And um, sometimes it's helpful to have like a, maybe a partnership, mm-hmm. right? Where one person is one and one person is the other. That can work really, really well. Or you just got to suck it up. Right? Yeah. Like if you're one or the other, you got to just suck it up and do the thing you don't like to do. Yep. Or hire it out if you can. Or someone if you someone can. can do it better than you. Yeah. And they know more. Yeah. And my, and actually probably like it more than you exactly. do too. Yeah. 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 It's a great point. Anything else? Anything else you would offer as advice? Oh, I mean, just don't quit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is not for quitters. Yeah. It's going to be uncomfortable. It is. It's uncomfortable and sometimes it really sucks, but the reward is so much greater. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. What's your message to the world? Oh, I, I don't know. Women can truly do it all. Mm. I, like that sounds so cliche, but I can be a mom and I can be happy and I can be a wife and I can be a business owner and I can do all of those things. Um, and no one should ever tell you that you can't mm. because you can. It just takes a lot of work, but it's totally yeah. possible. Yeah. And you can be happy in all those things. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Great message. You talk about not really understanding ear piercing and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. But cows, don't you like? Oh. Okay. Yeah, ear tagging. <laughs> yeah. Hollow- <I> yeah. <laughs> okay. Is same that, thing. Is that the same? I don't know. That's- well, what's the instrument like when you tag an ear? It's like, a, maybe it's like a gun, mm-hmm. but it's more of like a pair of pliers. Mm-hmm. They're like spring-loaded pr- pliers. Yes. Have okay. you ever seen this before? No, but the, the piercing gun is spring-loaded. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, then you, your tag is usually a two piece tag. Mm-hmm. So there's the, there's a front and a back mm-hmm. and obviously with the, you know, it's probably just like an earring, honestly. It is. Cause the back goes in when you pinch the two together mm-hmm. and then also makes a hole in their ear. Correct. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, um, and in between, now these are permanent, right? So they're not designed to be taken off ever. 
And so the actual tag in between, there's a hollow side and then there's a pointed side. Mm -hmm. And you just clip mm -hmm. on the ear and the pointed side pushes through the ear into the hollow side. And that's what you do. It's not, it doesn't sound nearly as nice as what you're doing. I don't know. It sounds exactly, <laughs> that sounds exactly what a piercing gun is really. Uh, Except um, for the cow doesn't get a pick, gold or silver. Doesn't yeah, get the pick. It's an ugly orange tag. It's yeah, depending on yeah how you how you color code your. Hopefully your cows, the placement's you know. good. Yeah. Yeah, you know. there's the placement actually really matters when you're. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that you're talking about this because the I'm placement like, oh, actually, really does matter. This. It totally on matters. a cow ear. It totally matters hmm. on a cow. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and w what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep it from being torn out on accidents. Yeah. Um, because if they get into a shoot or something like that, it can get caught and it needs to be in a spot that it's not going to get torn out. But mostly you don't want to damage. They have some like veins and capillaries that run yes. through the ear. Yes. And you don't want to damage one of those. Or hit one when or you go. hit one. That's another thing in hollow mm -hmm. needle. Yeah. Don't wow. hit the vein. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and so on a cow, it's pretty easy because you can sometimes see them, but you can feel them in the ear. And so, um, yeah, when you're going to ear tag... And usually they're, it's done as a calf almost always. And usually like a day or two after it's born, um, or sometimes the same day, but yeah, you'll go out, you'll ride out to the, the pasture or wherever you're keeping them. And here's where it gets interesting. And maybe there's some similarities here, but the mom does not like you touching that calf. Mm. Interesting. So you're fighting off the mom <laughs> while you're trying to hold this calf down and and tag it. A little traumatic. It's uh, yeah. So I've been uh, wrecked many times by angry mama cows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and so one of the things you try to do is you try to keep like your horse in between the mom and you, because the horse will isn't going to put up with that, right? Okay. And they're big enough that they can take care of it, but. Yeah, I've been in some pretty sticky situations with an angry oh, mama. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. And so oh. you get pretty good. And I've done, I don't know, hundreds, maybe maybe into the thousands of these. Wow. And so you get pretty good at loading up your, your gun or whatever, putting the calf down in a position that you can work on the ear that you want, feeling for the spot, and then just clicking it. It takes me mm, two seconds, huh. something like that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Come you, on over. I'll train you. Do you have to rope the kid to, to get Every them? now and then. The, the hard part with hollow needle on little girls is you do one ear and then you have to do the other one. Oh, okay. And that can be tricky. Some yeah. kids are fine and they say, oh, that didn't hurt. And sometimes it's a little traumatic. Yeah. So, and usually the mom or dad or both, because they expect it. Yeah. They're like, we're not leaving until you get the second ear pierced. <laughs> so, sure. so they don't. We just right. we do and it. You just take and, your time and yeah. And and I have it. lots of treats. That probably helps. What do we have to do? We got yeah. dum dums. We got chocolate. We got gum. We, what do we need to do to get this this hat? Do you have kid them, like happy? watch TV or something while they're no nothing like no, that? No, I should. I have a teddy bear. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Works. I know when I like cut my son's hair. If I give him something to watch, he will not move an inch the whole yeah. time. Yeah. But if I don't, he's, you know, doing this sort <laughs> of thing. Then he gets a time. special haircut. That's huh? right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> Christina, this was great. Thank you so much for being on. Um, this was awesome. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Yeah. 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 Um, and thank you for joining us on the Dragon Slayer podcast by East Idaho Credit Union. We'll see you next time. Woo! <laughs>